state what is meant by a photon. So this one is the standard definition. Just remember to use the keywords such as discrete, okay, because it's discrete values. So this is discrete amount of energy of the electromagnetic radiation. EM radiation. So you need to mention the keywords discrete energy and electromagnetic radiation. So this is pretty much the shorter sentence that you can write. Okay. So other terms beside discrete, you can also use quantum of energy or you can also use packet of energy. So basically it's a fixed value or fixed quantity. All right. Describe the appearance of a visible line emission spectrum as seen using a diffraction grating. So the visible line emission spectrum, emission hall, is a dark background with colored lines. So here's a quick reminder. Continuous spectrum is the rainbow colors. Emission is the electron transition to lower energy level and release electrons. Oh, sorry, release photons, ha, release photon of certain wavelength. Absorption, absorb photon. That's why you see the black color lines. So be very careful whether you're talking about emission or absorption. Which means for this one, we can say that this is dark background colored lines. We're going to use the UK spelling, colored lines on dark background. That's it. That's your two marks. Very nice. So colored lines is one mark. Lines, huh? you must use the word lines. And then on dark background is the other mark. All right, moving on. So here it says that the lowest electron energy level in an isolated hydrogen atom. So isolated hydrogen atom means the, hy the hydrogen atom is on its own. Okay, so the energy level is very discrete. Nah. So they give you all the values already. So what does the question want from us? An electron is initially at the energy level negative 8.5, 0 0.85. State the total number, total number of different wavelengths that can be emitted as the electron de-excites. So the opposite of excite, lah, losing energy. So we need to start from negative 0 0.85. Let's go back to the diagram and find negative 0 0.85. Right, we're back at the drawing. And I think we can see that negative 0 0.85 is this line here. Okay, so I'm going to draw out this line just to remind myself. Hey, purple line is negative 0 0.85. All right, so what are the possible transitions? Okay, let's do it step by step. We transition step by step, okay? So the first transition is from negative 0 0.85 little bit to negative 1.5. So this is number one. Okay, then we can continue the transition from negative 1.5 to negative 3.40 because they are just asking how many possible wavelengths from negative 0 0.85. So all these are possible wavelengths, right? You can go all the way down negative 3.4 to negative 13.6. This is the third wavelength. Hmm. Any more? There's no saying that you can only jump one level, right? Sometimes maybe you can jump two levels. Eh? For example, you could jump from this negative 0 0.85 oh, shortcut to negative 3.40. So this is wavelength number four. But if I continue the transition, okay, it will still be the same as wavelength number three. So there is no difference. All right. But is that all? I uh, can combine some more, right? We can also combine, let's say, the transition from wavelength number one, which we will not count anymore because it's the same. And then I guess we could also transition from negative 1.5 all the way down to ground state, negative 13.6. So this is line number five. It's a bit like Matt's question. How many ways are there to go down the staircase? So you can go step by step. 
one, two, three. You can jump the first two steps and then take the last step so that it looks like three. Or you can follow the first step and then jump the last two steps. So the fifth one. There's one last one. There's a very excited one. There is the one that jumps the most. All the way from negative 0 0.85. Pew! Doosh. So here, this is wavelength number six. So we have six different wavelengths that we can measure when the electron transition from negative 0 0.85 to a lower energy state. Okay, so each of these shows a different energy change. So there are six possibilities. Let me write that down. Okay, that's it for part one. Count carefully. All right, part two. Photons resulting from electron D excitation from negative 0.85 E volt are incident on the surface of a sample of platinum. Okay, so all the six different wavelengths we are going to send out the photons, the six different wavelengths of photons, to platinum. And platinum has a work function energy of 5.6 E volt. Determine the maximum kinetic energy in E volt of the photoelectron emitted from the surface of platinum. Okay, let's think a bit. We have platinum. Let me maybe draw a metal surface. So we think about the photoelectric effect that you have studied in the previous subtopic, okay? So -da 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 -da. this is the metal platinum, platinum. So we got the electrons in here, chilling. My dudes here is chilling, okay? And remember those six different wavelengths? Okay, I'm going to shoot them all in this direction. So this is Hc over lambda, energy of photon, E photon. Okay, the electrons will then escape the metal surface. So this is work function energy. I'm just going to put a phi here, work function energy. And then once the electron escape, it will have a certain amount of kinetic energy. So by conservation of energy, I can say the energy of the photon is equal to work function energy plus kinetic energy maximum. So work function is the minimum energy. Okay. So if I want to find the maximum Ke, I will use 5.6 here. And then this is Ke max. Meaning if I want the electron to have the most kinetic energy after it leaves the metal surface, I need to make sure that the energy of the photon is the largest or the greatest. So the largest here. So that means this Hc over lambda must be the biggest. So this lambda have to be the smallest. Okay, But wait a minute, teacher. We don't need lambda. Why? Ah? Because if you look at the energy level diagram, this diagram, we already have the energy level nicely given in E volt. Ah, cantik. So nice. Cantik. Cantik means nice in Malay lah. Okay, so we have this already. So we want the greatest energy transfer of all. You imagine the electron is like, I want to move the fastest. So you know, got to give me the most energy. Which one has the largest energy difference? the greatest transition, the one that will shoot out the most energy, of course, it is going to be from the high, from negative 0 0.8485 to the lowest energy level. We need to have maximum transition. So this one is your E photon maximum. So what is, it will be the difference in energy, right? And the difference in energy would be final negative 13.6 minus initial, which is negative 0 0.85, okay? So this will be 13.6 and 0 0.85. This will be 12.75, okay? But this one is negative to show that the E photon is emitted, release, okay? Because the photon, the electron loses energy. Electron de-excites, loses energy. All right. But the whole thing here is we're going to take the difference between 13.6 and 0 0.85. So if I don't want to explain the negative sign when I go back to my working here, 
I am just going to take the difference, the difference in energy level, which was 13.6 minus, uh, let me use green for this, 13.6 minus 0 0.85. So a footnote here for you, the energy of photon is equal to energy difference between energy levels. Okay, so from here, I will get 12.75. This is already in E volt. Thank goodness. 5.6 E volt plus Ke max. So from here, you can find your Ke max as 12.75 minus 5.6, which will give us 7.15. I'm going to put 7.2 also can for 1 SF, but I'll just stick to 7.15 evil okay so in other words right if you want your kinetic energy to be maximum largest of them all then your photon will also have to be largest of them all so that there's extra energy left for the electron after it escapes the metal surface in the form of kinetic energy okay so then you go and look at the energy level diagram and find the largest jump find the largest energy difference Okay, number two, wavelength of the photon producing electron in part one. So if I want to find wavelength, oh wait, I remember the equation just now. E is equal to hc over lambda, right? So whenever there is uh, an equation that involves wavelength, it's either hc over lambda or momentum is h over lambda. But in this case, no, no talk about momentum, so no need to use. But we definitely know the energy. The energy of the photon is actually 7 point, not 7.15, 12.75 EVO. This one. Okay, this is the energy of the photon. So I'm going to take 12.75, okay? So this is 12.75. Okay, so this is 12.75 EVO. But ladies and gentlemen, this 12.75 is in EVO. Can I keep it in EVO? No. It needs to be converted, converted to Joule. So I'm going to change this to Joule. And the way to convert EVO to Joule is to multiply by the electronic charge. Okay. H is 6.63 times 10 to the power of negative 34. C is the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the power of 8. And we are seeking or looking for wavelength. Okay, this thing is three mark, so I should I better show equation, one mark, substitution, making sure everything is correct, one mark. So remember, uh, just a note here, this equation, all units are SI. Miss, just now you never convert also for the kinetic energy. I don't need to convert for the kinetic energy because the energy of photon already evolved. Because the energy level diagram is in EVO. The work function energy 5.6 also EVO. Ah, EVO and EVO, same unit can minus, can be friends. This one, different unit cannot la. Whenever you use a physical constant like H and C, everything else that's sharing the equation must be converted to SI. So remember to convert to SI. So I talk so much, you got press calculator or not. I talk so much, you press calculator, right? So 9.8 times 10 to the power of negative 8 meter. Okay, uh, you can be fancy and convert it to nano, but you know, I don't see a point. So I'm just going to write prefix and call it a day. The final answer would be the final third mark. Okay, so these two are calculation mark and the other one is an answer mark. Okay, so... Most of these questions uh, for hydrogen energy level is very straightforward because what you are doing is you are just looking at the discrete transition of the energy levels. All right. So for questions like this, make sure you show the 13.6. This is C1 minus uh, the subtraction is important. And then the final answer is A1. Of course, if you calculate correctly, you use 12.75, we assume you minus. Uh, but to be safe, write this working, okay? And then the rest should be fairly self-explanatory. 
Okay, so this question is not that hard. Mainly talking about energy transition. Count your energy levels correctly. Understand that whenever an electron travels down, it will release a photon. And that photon release, we can study and find out a lot of stuff, including stuff about astrophysics that will be in your near future. And I'll see you there then. Bye-bye.